Have you ever paid attention to the poles and wires carrying electricity to houses before? Yes, those things. Do you think they play any role in shaping who you are, your ideas about the places you live, as well as the history and future of a city or even nation? My dissertation argues the answer is yes. I conduct my research in Tokyo, where poles and wires are everywhere, especially in residential area, forming a kind of forest. The city distinguished Tokyo, where utility poles still exist on 90% of the roads compared to their complete absence in places like London or Paris. In recent years, the Japanese government have been trying to speed up the burial of the infrastructure underground in a process called Mudenchuka, whose challenges inform my focus. The government isn't a fan of these poles and overhead wires. They pursue Mudenchuka to bring citizens accessible, beautiful streets that are resilient against disaster, which together form their vision for a new Japanese society. However, this effort was frustrated by how construction by public body requires beforehand extensive approvals, complex technological manuals, and excessive safety standards. Infrastructure, their construction and demolition, can situate people and society with this certain timelines of progress. Poles and wires, the government believes, keep Japan behind, and removing them pushes the country forward. However, these objects have so seamlessly entered places of living, so construction tends to be lengthy and disruptive to people's rhythms of life, thus creates resistance to grander trajectories. The Midianchuka people also frames the poles and wires as street garbage and visible signs of disorder. However, the exhibition paintings of electricity wire offers an unexpected alternative by showing how the infrastructure had entered the Japanese artistic imagination ever since their first introduction to the country. These paintings show us how these objects become symbols for modernization in the Meiji era and how these feelings have evolved into nostalgia via their naturalization in the landscape. So, poles and wires barely interact with anyone, but having melted into society, they contribute to what people feel is normal, their daily rhythm, their landscape. But there are other infrastructure in place at the moment that form our normal, our transportation, our buildings, that we may have to rebuild or at least alter to create a more sustainable world. In the process, we encounter things that may be both ally or resistant to change. We must consider fully their multifaceted involvement in our lives.